Peace and love family, Rastafari greetings to the mass of them. Come to do a presentation on the historical origins of Ethiopia. Here you can see a chronological chart taken from the work Aksum and Aksu, an African civilization of late antiquity, Stuart Monroe here in 1991. It has divided the chronology into six periods and yeah, you can check it out. The Aksumite state emerged at about the beginning of the Christian era, flourished during the succeeding 6th or 7th centuries, and underwent prolonged decline from the 8th to 12th century AD. Aksum period of greatest power lasted from the 4th through the 6th century, like 300 to 600 AD. Its core area lay in the highlands of what is today southern Eritrea, Tigray, Lasta in present-day Wello, and Angot, also in Wello. Its major centers were Aksum and Adulis. Earlier centers, such as Yeha, also continued to flourish. At the, at the kingdom's height, its rulers held sway over the Red Sea coast from Sawakin in present-day Sudan in the north to Berbera in present-day Somalia in the south and inland as far as the Nile Valley in modern Sudan. On the Arabian side of the Red Sea, the Aksumite rulers at the time controlled the coast and much of the interior of modern Yemen. During the 6th and 7th centuries, the Aksumite state lost its possession in southwest Arabia and much of its Red Sea coastline and gradually shrank to its core area, with the political center of the state shifting farther and farther southward, something resembling modern Ethiopia. Inscriptions from Aksum and elsewhere date from as early as the end of the second century AD and reveal an Aksumite state that had already expanded at the expense of neighboring peoples. The Greek inscriptions of King Zoskalis, who ruled at the end of the second century AD, claimed that he conquered the lands to the south and southwest of what is now Tigray and controlled the Red Sea. The Red Sea coast from Sawakin south to the present day Djibouti and Bulgaria area. The Aksumite state controlled part of Southwest Arabia as well during this time, and subsequent Aksumite rulers continually evolved them, involved themselves in the political and military affairs of Southwest Arabia, especially what is now Yemen. Much of the impetus for foreign conquest lay in the desire to control the maritime trade between the Roman Empire and India and adjoining areas. Indeed, King Zoskalis is mentioned by name in the periplus of the Eritrean Sea. The Latin term for the Red Sea is Mere Eritrea. A Greek shipping guide from the 1st to 3rd century AD as promoting commerce with Rome, Arabia, and India. Among the African commodities that the Aksumite exported were gold, rhinoceros horn, ivory, incense, obsidian. In return, they imported cloth, glass, iron, olive oil, and wine. During the 3rd and 4th centuries, the traditions related to Aksumite rule became fixed. Gedara, who lived in the late 2nd and early 3rd centuries, is referred to as the king of Aksum in inscriptions written in Giz, also seen as Giz, the Semitic language of the Aksumite kingdom. The growth of imperial traditions was concurrent with the expansion of foreign holdings especially in Southwest Arabia in the late second century AD, and later areas west of the Ethiopian highlands, including the kingdom of Meru. The Aksumite state bordered one of the ancient world's greatest arteries of commerce, the Red Sea, and through its port at Adilis, Aksum participated actively in contemporary events. Its links with other countries, whether through military campaigns, trading enterprise, or cultural or ideological exchange, made Aksum part and parcel of the international community of the time. Peripheral perhaps from the Romanocentric point of view, but directly involved with the nations of the South and Eastern states, both within the Roman Empire and beyond. Aksum's position in international trade and diplomatic activity which connected the Roman provinces around the Mediterranean via the Red Sea, with South Arabia, Persia, India, Sri Lanka, and even China, tied it too firmly into the network of commerce, commerce to be simply ignored. Here you can see a diagram of the Red Sea, the Roman and them trade routes, Rastafari. 
Gadarat was a king of the kingdom of Aksum, circa 200 AD. Known for being the first king to be involved, Aksum in the affairs of what is now Yemen. He's known primarily from inscriptions in South Arabia that mention him and his son Begat. Gadarat is thought to be the same person as GDR, the inscription on the bronze wand or scepter that is found in an area near Atbi and Dara Adigalamo in northern Ethiopia. Gadarat has been equated with the anonymous king of the Monumentum Adolatanum, which would date his reign to around 200 to 230. However, the two rulers are usually thought to be distinct. However, the French scholar Christian Robin, studying the inscriptions at Al Misal in Yemen, has shown that Gadarat and his successor Adiba lived in the earlier half of the third century. Aksumite inscriptions of Gadara represent the oldest, the oldest surviving royal inscriptions in the Giza alphabet. That one there from Gadara. The oldest of these was found at the Adigalamu in the region of Atbi and Dara in eastern Tigray region in northern Ethiopia. The area is rich in pre aksumite artifacts and inscriptions of a pre aksumite kingdom called Damat have been found in the region. The inscriptions mention Gadarat as the only evidence of his existence from the western side of the Red Sea. Gadarat, Negusi, Aksum, Tablet Meslet Ar Al Maka. The Adigalamu inscription was written on a scepter of boomerang like object. The linguist E.G. Drews therefore interprets MZLT as meaning a scepter or a royal emblem. The inscription's meaning is uncertain, but if ML MZLT is taken to mean a scepter and ARG and LMQ are taken to be place names or sanctuaries, then according to Alexander Seema, the text could mean GDR, King of Aksum, gave this scepter into the possession of the sanctuaries of Arg and Almata. The South Arabian expert WF Albert Jami, however, translates the inscription as Gadara, King of Aksum, occupied the passages of Argan al Makkah. Gadara, King of Aksum, is humbled before the gods Ark and al Makkah. Al Makkah, assuming that al Makkah was assimilated. Gadara is first mentioned in South Arabian inscription as an ally of Al Han Nafal, King of Saba, in an inscription at Marem Belkis, at Marib in Yemen, the temple of the moon god Al Makkah. They agreed together that their war and their peace should be in unison against anyone that might rise up against them, and that in safety and that in security, they should be allied together, Salhen and Zararan, and Alhan and Gadarat. Alexander Sima translated the text slightly different, specifying that it was Gadarat who sent a diplomatic mission to Alhan in order to form an alliance. Both interpret Zararan or Zararan or Z-R-R-N as the name of a palace in Aksum at the time, parallel to Salen, the palace of Saba in Mareb. This Salen Saba parallel, along with the Duraiden Hemiar parallel, was often, was often used by Aksumite kings in their inscriptions, enumerating the territories under their control. A Hemiarite inscription confirms the Sabian text, mentioning Aksum, Saba, Hadramat, Kataban were all allied against Hemiar. Alhan Nafan's son, Shahir Arta, or Sharum Arta, later abandoned the alliance with Gadarat after he became, he became king of Saba. However, during the first part of Shahir Arta's reign, the two powers seem to have enjoined an alliance once again, this time against Hadramaut. Saba's invasion of Hadramaut with Aksum's help culminated in the latter's defeat and the occupation of its capital, Shabwa in 225. Shahir Auta's attack represents a major shift in policy as before the attack. The king of Hadramat, Elaz Yalut, was married to his sister. He had even helped suppress the revolt against Elaz Yalut. Although Saba was previously aligned with Aksum against Himya, both Himyarite and Sabian troops were used in the attack against Hadramat. Immediately following the conquest of Hadramat, 
shot your out uh, allied with him years against his former adult ally Gadarat. The second Sabian inscription from the sanctuary Auma in Mareb during the reign of Shahir Outa's successor, Yuhayit Yarham, describes events in the latter part of his predecessor's reign. The inscription tells a diplomatic mission sent by Shahir Outa to Gadarat, the results of which are unknown. However, the text later goes on to describe a war between Sabah and Aksum in the southern highlands of Yemen implying that the negotiations were futile. Aksum lost a battle as a result of the Sabah Himyara alliance, allowing the South Arabian forces to expel Gadarat's son, Begat, and his forces from the Himyarite capital of Zafar, which had previously been held by Aksum after the Aksum Hadramad Kataban Sabah alliance. Despite this loss, Aksum still held territory in South Arabia, as evidenced by inscriptions of Luha at Yahoo around 230, which details at least one known clash with the Habashat troops in Yemen after Gadarat's raid. Peace may have been established after Gadarat's death, but war and Aksum in Aksumite involvement was renewed under his successors, such as Adiba and Garamat, and the whole third century from 200 to 300 AD was to be dominated by Ethiopian-Yemeni conflicts. Gadarat was most likely the first Aksumite king to be involved in South Arabian affairs, as well as the first known king to be mentioned in South Arabian inscriptions. His reign resulted in the control of much of Western Yemen, such as Taihama, Najra, Ma'afa, Zafir. You have to go and check them places and see which part it is in geography and part of Hashid territory around Hamir in the northern highlands. Furthermore, Gadarat's military alliance and its conquest in Yemen and Saudi Arabia, the required formidable fleet for such feats, and the extension of Aksumite influence throughout Yemen and South Southern Arabia all reflect the new zenith in Aksumite power. His involvement would mark the beginning of centuries of Aksumite involvement in South Arabia, culminating with the full-scale invasion of Yemen by King Caleb in 520 or 525, resulting in the establishment of an Aksumite province covering all of South Arabia. Gadara's name may be preserved in Ethiopian tradition through traditional king's list, as what seems to be a variant of his name crops up in three of them. Gedur is listed as the third king in list C. Zegduru, Zeg meaning of in Ge'ez, appears as the sixth in, in list E and Zegdur appears as the third in list B after the legendary Menelik the first. Zegdur also is mentioned in at least one hagiography and short chronicle. The king's list was composed centuries after the fall of the Aksumite kingdom, however, and generally do not agree with archaeological records except when concerning famous kings. 